you have a Bible, will you turn with me to Revelation chapter 3, verse 14? <coughs> Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. There's one verse specifically that I want to speak on tonight, but I want to read the setting which is written. <coughs> Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Iris. That's short appreciation. <laughs> to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. And listen to the Lord's act ray of this church. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot, I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Now that's the words of Jesus Christ to the church in the last generation before he returns, the seventh church age. Because, here's a reason why. You say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing. And do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous or eager and repent. Now, we know the famous verse, verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine or sup with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He's talking to the churches. He's reading, he's writing to the seven churches in Asia Minor. And this is the last church. Many theologians and commentators believe that those seven churches are seven church ages. And we're living in the last church age. The Laodicean lukewarm church age. Let me pray. Father, will you bless the reading of your word? Thank you for those ministry and songs tonight that exalt Jesus. Oh Lord, will you prepare us, even sitting in this house tonight, will you prepare every one of us for the coming of the Lord? Lord, we're living in evil days, days of compromise. Days of watered-down Christianity. Days of weakness. And Lord, we're asking you, would you make your church strong in these evil days? That we will stand, and having done all, to stand in the evil day against the wiles of the devil. So Lord, hear our cry. Touch every heart, Lord. Release your word. Speak to every life. And Lord, if there be anybody here that's not right with you, May this be the night they'll get right. Someone not saved, may they get saved in the night. Someone backslidden, Lord, may they be restored to it. Someone out of sorts, cold, lukewarm, then, Lord, may tonight they become hot for Jesus Christ. We ask these things in your name. And everybody say it. Amen. Amen. You may be seated and you're sitting. <laughs> that was quick. Jesus said these words, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and sup or dine with him and he with me. These are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior of Calvary, the risen Lord, the coming king. These are his words. And here are three things to take home with you. Here is our Lord's sobering position. He's outside. He's outside waiting to get in. 
Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Listen to our Lord's simple plea. If anyone, anyone hears my voice and opens the door, that's a simple plea. And here's our Lord's solemn promise. I will come in to him or her and sup with them and them with me. His promise is to save, to become your savior. His promise is to sanctify, I will sup with him. He wants to set you apart for fellowship and intimacy. And his promise is to secure. In other words, he will be with me. You see, brother and sister, friend and I, Jesus saves, he sanctifies, and he satisfies. That's our security. Our security is in him. He saves, he sanctifies, and he satisfies. And notice where he is. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Notice where he is. He's what he's doing. He's standing. He's knocking. He's calling. And he's waiting. And he's promising. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, then I will come in to him and sup with him and he with me. Notice I will stand at the door and knock. Jesus stands at the door. He's just outside the door. So close, yet not in. So close, yet not there yet. So close, yet so far away. There's just a door between you and him. There's just a door to keep you apart from him. And he knocks. He doesn't only, he, he doesn't only call, he knocks to let you know that he's there. That's how personal Jesus is. He's standing and he's knocking at the door of hearts. If any man or anyone hears my voice, that's anyone, any man, no matter who that man or woman is, Protestant, Catholic, Jew, Arab, black, white, rich, poor, young, old, it doesn't matter. Can I hear an amen out there? It doesn't matter. As long as you're a sinner, come on, let's give up the door. Anyone, anyone, hear my voice and opens the door. To the man or the woman who hears his voice and opens the door, then the promise is, I'll come in. I'll come in to him and sup with him and he with me. It's personal. The question is, are you willing to invite Jesus in or shut Jesus out? Are you willing to open the door or keep it closed? Are you willing to answer his knock or to ignore it? You've probably heard this story more times than enough, but Holman Hunt was a great artist. The great artist was asked to portray the Lord Jesus Christ in the world. He depicted the scene of an old door hanging on rusty hinges, covered with the aging of growth of years. And outside is Christ clad in his kingly robes, out in the dew and darkness of the night. In one hand he holds a lighted lamp, whose rays are penetrating through the cracks and crevices of the old door. And with the other hand, he's knocking at the door. The title of his painting, we would probably ask, maybe would be Christ knocking at the door. But no, Hunt, with a touch of genius, called it the light of the world. I am the light of the world. To Hunt, the wonder of all wonders was that the light of life, of salvation and victory, should be so near just outside the door of every heart and within that door is death, sickness, darkness and despair. Yet within the space of a door there was salvation. Every single person, can I have your attention for a minute? Every, look at me for, just for a second. Every single person sitting in this room tonight has a door in their heart. Every single person in this service has a door that opens into their heart. And as we live in the fast life, where life is lived in the fast lane, the door of many hearts opens and shuts thousands of times daily. 
I wonder what things you open your heart to, or your heart's door to. Your wife, you have to. Your husband, your friends, your neighbours, your workmates, the world, the flesh, the devil, boyfriends, girlfriends, drunken pals, sinful habits. Some open their heart's door to anything under the sun. Whatever's going, they welcome it in. Anything and anyone has free access. But the strange thing is, at the mention of Jesus Christ, the heart's door is not only immediately closed, but locked and bolted and a no entry or a do not disturb sign pinned on the outside. The unwanted Christ standing outside the door. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Somebody's knocking at your door tonight. Could you look at somebody? Did you hear that? Look at somebody and say, somebody's knocking at the door. If it were the Queen of the United Kingdom, you would fluster and panic, bring out the, the best delf and cutlery, make her tea or lunch, whatever, get the duster out in the hoover. If it were your friend or neighbour, you'd just call and just come on in. If it was a burglar, you'd phone the peelers or the police. But no one, no, the one who stands outside your heart's door tonight is Jesus. The one who came from heaven's splendor, born of a virgin, who lived a sinless, spotless life, who performed a miraculous ministry. And yet the one who, and this man whom they took because they didn't want him, still didn't want him, he died on a cross at Calvary. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He knocked on the door of this evil world and the world had no time for him, didn't want him to come in. So they set about crucifying him on the cross at Calvary, putting up a sign, no admission. We will not have this man to reign over us. He was in the world and the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. He came on to his own. And his own received him not. He knocked on the door of the world. And they put him on a cross. He knocked on the door of the church. But the church was too busy. Doing religion. Performing rituals. Or performing rituals. And all the rest of all the stuff that goes along with religion. Brother and sister. But it didn't, it didn't even notice. That he wasn't inside. But outside trying to get in. Listen to what he said to this church. I know your works. And that you are neither hot or cold. So then because you are lukewarm. Neither cold or hot. I will spew you or vomit you. Out of my mouth. Why? Because you say I am rich. And increased with goods. And of need of nothing. And know not that you are wretched. Miserable. Poor. Blind. And naked. There's two churches when Jesus comes. There's a lukewarm church and there's a hot church, the on fire church. Which one are you belonging to? There's the lukewarm church that makes him sick, and there's a hot on fire church that he's coming for. Brother and sister, a lukewarm, sickening church full of self conceit, boasting of self sufficiency, yet. It was found to be wanting, poor, blind, miserable and wretched and naked. What a sad picture. This church, by the way, is the seventh letter from Jesus. There were seven churches and he wrote a letter to each one of them. As I said, theologians believe that seven church ages before the return of Christ. And if it's the seventh one, can I tell you, it's the last church age. It's the Laodicean age. It's the lukewarm age. It's the, it's the age where the church is making the master sick. But brother and sister, can I tell you something? Joel also said, in that lukewarm church age, there is the real church. The church on fire for Jesus. Would you say amen to that? And the church that I'm talking about is the church that he said, I will build my church. Not on programs, not on this, not on that, not on the earth. No, I will build my church 
and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Two churches, the lukewarm church and the on fire church. Brother and sister, I want the people's church to be part of the on fire church. Can I hear an amen? What a sad picture of the church in the 21st century. Laodicea, lukewarm, the last church before the glorious second coming. Churches carry on without him. They're doing everything religious, and he's outside nothing to get in. Oh, what a warning. We are living in the last days, and the king is coming. If you believe he's coming, shout hallelujah. Behold, the bridegroom comes. He's coming. Brother and sister, may we fling the doors of our church open and allow the head of the church pride of place in the people's church, Newton Abbey. He's the Lord and Lord Jesus tonight. I say personally, we enthrone you. We enthrone you in our hearts and in our church. But also, can I say, alas, too many congregations have shut the door of their church and closed it in his face. And the head of the church is outside. He shut out. What place does Jesus have in your assembly? If you're from another church, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Now listen to this. If any man, that's the King James verse, that's the King James. If any man, say man, if any man hear my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and sup with him and he with me. He knocked on the door of the world and it crucified him. He knocked on the door of the church and it ignored him, put him outside, kept him there. Now tonight he knocks on the door of every heart in here. Every heart in here. There's no excuses. He knocks on the door at your heart, young person. At your heart, sir. At your heart, lady. He knocks on the door of your heart, senior citizen. He's knocking on your heart's door. The heart of the individual. He knocks. He knocks loudly. He knocks softly. But he knocks. He is knocking. Friend, your life may, may be in tatters, but he knocks with the ability and the power to make it all over again. He can take your mess and turn it into a miracle. That's why he's knocking to get in and change your life. Maybe your life is, is, is in misery. He knocks with strength and hope and joy. Maybe your life has lost its purpose. He knocks with a purpose for you and plans for your future. To give you a future and a hope. He knocks, I am the light of the world in your life of darkness. He knocks, it may be in despair. He knocks with comfort and consolation. Maybe your life is twisted by sin. He knocks with forgiveness and cleansing and a new life to give to you. Do you believe it? He knocks. Maybe you're at death's door. Maybe you've given up on life. Maybe you're suicidal. He knocks with the blessed assurance that if you put your trust in him, he'll look after you for the rest of eternity. Freddy knocks with salvation. Maybe you're a lost sinner in a lost world heading for a lost eternity. Well, he knocks that he may save you and rescue you and redeem you with his precious blood. Friend, can you see the nearness of Christ tonight? He's just outside the door. He's not locked away in glory. He's not away on an errand in the universe. No, he's not walking along the shores of Galilee. No, he's outside your heart's door wanting in. How many times have you heard him knocking in your life? How many times have you heard him knocking and still you haven't let him in? Remember when you were a child on your mother's knee? You heard the story. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. 
and your mother asks you, do you want them in? Maybe in Sunday school, the Sunday school teacher, and you're maybe six or seven years of age, and you said, Jesus is knocking at the door. Who wants them in? And you wanted to invite them in. But you didn't. In your teens, when you were young and full of energy and zeal for the things of the world, he knocked. But you were too preoccupied with girlfriends or boyfriends and your apprenticeship and your university course. In later years, you heard the knocking again, but you were too busy rearing a family. Now in old age, you hear the knocking. He's knocking with urgency before it's too late. Oh friend, don't leave this too long because the knocking may end. And you've lost. The knocking gets louder the older you get. Louder and louder to try and wake you up out of your slothfulness and slumber. Oh he knocks. Listen to Isaiah. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. In other words, there's a time when he's near and there's a time when he's not. But tonight he's here and he's near and he's knocking. Oh, may you hear him knocking on your heart's door. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Friend, how near has he have to be for you to open that door? Can you hear him knocking, friend? Maybe most of us are Christians. That's lovely. But can he walk in and out of your home? Can he walk in and out of your heart? Does he have the lordship of your heart and of your life, Christian? Thank God that you can hear him. Praise his name that you can hear the knock. For when you can't hear him knocking, you're lost and you've left it too late. Oh, do you see the importance of opening the door? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens, then... He knocks, and he's knocking on somebody's door tonight. Can you hear him knocking in your heart? He doesn't only knock, he actually calls. He knocks, and he also calls. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man or anyone hears my voice, he's not only knocking, he's calling. Could it be he knocks and calls to be doubly sure that you can hear him so that you are in no doubt who it is? It's Jesus. It's Jesus. There's an old lady in Glasgow tenement building called Batty. She fell upon hard times. Her husband died. Her family left. And she was struggling to pay her rent and bills. I was told the local pastor, the local church, raised an offering, he brought it down to the tenement building and he, uh, he asked where she lived, she lived right at the top, went up the top, wrapped the door, no answer. So he's walking out and he says, it's me, Betty, and oh, I says, in. Well, she's not answering, no, she won't answer, she thinks you're the bailiff. She's afraid to answer. So he goes up again, wraps the door, no answer. Goes to turn away, he wraps the door and he says, Betty! It's the pastor of the church. The door opened slowly. Sorry, pastor. I thought you were the bailiff. Can I say something to you? The Lord Jesus is not a bailiff. He doesn't come to take away from you only your sin. He comes to give you everything he's got. He comes to give you everything he's got. We better knew what that meant from that day. Christ is not a bailiff. Satan is. Christ doesn't come to steal, kill, and destroy. Satan does. He comes to give you life with a capital L or life more abundant. In place of your sin, he wants to fill your life with forgiveness, hope, and a future. Christ came not to take, but to give us life a ransom for many. Yes, he calls. Do you hear his persistent calling? Do you hear the longing and yearning in his heart tonight for you to let him in? Can you feel the love he has just simply for you, yet your door is still shut? Friend, look at the offer he makes you. If any man or anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and sup with him and pay with me. What an offer. 
he makes an offer you can't refuse. Supper with him, quality time with Jesus, communion, fellowship with the Son of God, the crucified, risen Lord, the coming King. What are you waiting on? But alas, there's one major problem. Let me refer back to Holman Hunt's painting. One somewhat sharp observer or critic that day that he unveiled that amazing painting of Jesus standing at the door with a lamp in one hand and robbing the door and the old door, rugged door, with a light and through the crevices and the cracks. One critic noticed something about the, the painting. And he spoke to the great author, he says, I think you've made a mistake with your painting, Mr. Hunt. And he said, what, have you, what, what is it? He said, you've made a terrible mistake. You haven't painted the latch, or there's no handle on the door. To which the artist smiled and replied, that is no mistake, my friend. The handle or the latch is on the inside. Friend, the handle's on your side. Did you hear that young person? The handle's on your side. Did you hear that, sir, lady? The handle's on your side. Will you open the door of your heart and let Jesus, the Savior, in to me? Have you any room for Jesus? Do you know, that's the sad thing. That we hymn says, room for pleasure, room for business. But for Christ to crucify, not a place that he can enter in the heart for which he died. Jesus Christ died on the cross for you, that you may spend eternity with him. He wants to save you. He wants to forgive you. He wants to change you. And he wants to prepare you for eternity. But you've got to let him in. You've got to let him in. You've got to take the handle, open the handle and let him in. Friend, room for Jesus, King of glory. Hasten now his word of death to bed. Swing your hearts, door widely open. Bid him enter as you may. You see, it's a personal door. It's the door of your heart. It's personal. It's pointed. He's calling. He's knocking. And he's waiting. It's also pressing. He wants to know what you're going to do. Will you let him in? And will you let him in the name? Will you let him in? And will you let him in right now? Would you let him in? And will you let him in tonight? Friend, maybe you're a Christian. And you're serving the Lord. Maybe you're in a church. Like the lay of the same church. You're doing church. You're doing everything in church. You're doing everything about church. But you're doing church, not Jesus. He's outside the church. Many churches today in our land are just going through the motions. The Savior is outside, knocking to get in. Tonight, are you a Christian, a casual Christian, or a committed Christian? Are you a lukewarm Christian or an on fire Christian? Are you a passionate Christian or an easy oozy does a Christian? Friend, tonight, listen, it all depends what you are and it will depend what Jesus will do with you. Because if you're lukewarm, sadly, you'll make him sick. But if you're on fire, he'll be behind you. He'll be behind you every, every step of the way. Don't do church. Don't leave Jesus on the outside, knocking to get in. Tonight, if you hear his voice, open the door and let him in. 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 Oh, may God help us in these days. Lord Jesus. Jesus, be Lord of this church and Lord of our lives. We're living in dangerous times, friend. There is a great apostasy. 
there is a great apostasy. Churches are doing programs. The Bible's not even read anymore. Gospel's not even preached anymore. It doesn't be believable. There's Christian ministers, so-called Christian ministers. One Christian minister in Canada who's an atheist. And the congregation are happy that she's an atheist. And the bagger to the help. That's not a church. That's not the church that he's building. That's not the church that we belong to. We belong to his blood washed, blood bought, born again church. And he's coming for that church. He will expose the other when he comes with the brightness of his coming and the fierceness of his wrath. He's coming for his blood washed people. Are you ready? Are you ready for him coming? Oh, may God bless us tonight. Don't be lukewarm. Don't be easy oozy. Don't be hot and cold. Don't, because it will make him sick. Get on fire for Jesus, and people will come to see you burning. Get on fire for Jesus. Christian, look at me. Come on. Commit your life to Jesus. Not once a week. Commit your life to Jesus. Commit your lifestyle to Jesus. Were you in the pub last night, drinking pints, getting drunk, and you're in church tonight? Don't be a hypocrite. If you're going to be a Christian, be a real one. Be a real one. In the name of the Lord. If Jesus Christ came tonight, would you rise to meet him? Or would you be left behind? It's time to get right with the Lord. Because time is running out. That's my prayer tonight.